new rules. What do you need to be aware of here? So I've given a little bit of summary. It's not as simple as this, but essentially the government say, look, um, the board of tax um, came out with an idea that our tax rate at the moment is creating uncertainty. So let's just make it more clear cut for everyone. So they have a bright line test. That's the first test. So somebody coming into Australia will become a tax resident if they're here for 183 days or more. So if they cross that, they're a tax resident under the domestic laws, right? Mm -hmm. So that bright line, that creates certainty. Um, resides test doesn't come in? Sorry? Resides, ordinarily resides? Uh, no, nothing like that. It's just about wait, 183 days or more, right? So that bright line. You would say, yeah, that, that's easier to administer. But... It's not as simple as that because the other element is if you're not here for 183 days or more, then you've got to look at these other factors. You could still be an Aussie tax resident if you're here for less than half a year. If you're in Australia for 45 days or more, right? And you satisfy two out of four factors, right? So remember 45 days is only a month and a half. For a lot of people, that's not enough time to be with their family and go back home to work. And then if they have two out of these four factors, they're gone, right? So right to reside permanently in Australia. So if you have a PR, you see, that's a tick on you, right? Australian accommodation. So if the house is in your name, that's another tick, right? But if the house is not in your name, but it's available to you, for example, it's held by another relative, it could still be a tick. Having Australian family, right? So if you have a spouse or uh, you have children under the age of 18 who are tax residents in Australia, that's also not a tick. Economic interests, having a bank account with deposits of money, having a business in Australia, assets, right? You can start to see that it's very easy to tick a couple of these factors. Oh my gosh. Can we, can we like just apply this to my parents? Um, <laughs> no, so, so how many of us, you know, who are migrants have taken up PR? Yeah. Yeah. Who are relying on, uh, I'm not here for half a year. I should still be fine. But wait, all of a sudden, if I'm here for more than a month and a half and I have PR, I'm pretty much 80% of the way there. Yeah. That, that's right. That's right. Right. In Australian family. Yeah. Accommodation. Oh, you know, I have a house, an apartment. I have a bank account. Yeah. And, and, and just going back to that PR one, the permanent resident one, and in order to meet your permanent residency sort of requirements, you need to be in Australia for like three or two out of five years. I think yeah. Something like that. Right. Now, nowadays. To and get PR status. Times you need to come in and out of the country <laughs> to maintain it, but yeah. get out for 45 days. That's crazy. That's, that's why if we go back to that, um, that multiple factors I'm looking at, tax is one view. You also got your migration issues, the visa requirements. It can be a bit of a mind trick to go through all this, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let, let's apply this to a random person, Australian resident. Uh, who has parents overseas. She's just had a kid um, asking mom to come down and help to uh, look up the kid as usual with very, you know, Asian uh, cultures. And, you know, mom usually stays for like three months, you know. Um, yeah. And would would that mom uh, or grandma, would grandma suddenly be an Australian resident? Well, uh, based on the, the Board of Tax paper, yeah. Um, so mind you, these are not legislation yet, right? So it might change. You would say, okay, if that if the mum doesn't have PR, that's out. Australian accommodation, you would say, well, if she doesn't own the house, then you know, yes, it might be that the house is out pretty much available for her to use. It might take that, but you would say maybe that's grey, maybe not. Australian family, you would say, okay, Australian family only includes spouse and dependent children. So you probably say no. An adult kid, so that's fine. Right. Economic interest, if she doesn't open a bank account, doesn't start doing investment activities in Australia, you would say probably no. So you probably say, yep, still okay. As long as uh, out, not, not staying for six months, right? Yeah. 
oh, okay, phew. So that could still be okay. Um, but for somebody who, um, historically, you have situations where people want to get the PR, they want to get Medicare. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but they're not in the country. They still have bank accounts. They buy properties, investor properties. For that type of clientele, you could start seeing more issues. Yeah. Especially if they have a sort of a permanent place to live when they yeah. come Australia, which yes, a lot of migrants sometimes uh, do have. Yeah, like uh, that's right. Uh, migrants with money, you would see that this big more more of an issue, right? Yeah. Now, all this is still subject to the tax treaty. So, as I say, the tax treaty could come into save today. Um, Interesting. Anyway, it's uh, it's there, something to be aware of. Uh, 